brilliant, man. He doesn't do that stuff anymore. He should do more of that stuff. <laughs> Fat stringers and lower lovers, how the devil are you today? And today I am base reviewing Mother's Milk by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Woo! Of course, this is just my opinion, doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong, okay? Uh, you have your opinion, I'll be interested to hear your opinion in the comments below, so please do that. Now, getting on to the album. Okay, so Mother's Milk came out before Blood Sugar Sex Magic. I think internally I have this consistent and constant argument going on with myself as to what is the best album, the best Chili's album, and I'm always kind of like flitting between Mother's Milk and Blood Sugar. It's really, really easy to be cynical about the Chili Peppers these days, but you've got to remember that back in the day, back in like the late 80s and the early 90s, all the way through to the mid 90s, I'd say, they were a, they were a breath of fresh air. Their live shows were energetic, they were crazy, their music was crazy and energetic, and they just came in with this like fast funk, fast punk rock thing going on and just mixing up all these genres. It was about the early 90s that people were beginning to mix genres anyway, so you had like kind of like funk metal, rap metal, whatever you want to call it, uh, funk and punk and punk and metal, it all just went It was a great time for music, and especially a great time for experimental music. And it's frustrating for me personally, because I think Mother's Milk is an amazing album, uh, and I'll go into those details why in a second, but like, a lot of critics, like people like, I remember Rolling Stone saying that, um, that the Chili Peppers didn't really get into their maturity, their musical maturity until Californication. And I think that's really, really unfair. I think that they hit their musical maturity probably around about Mother's Milk and then mastered it at Blood Sugar Sex Magic. And then, I, I love One Hot Minute. I think it's a brilliant album. I'm not keen on Californication. Anything after, it's got some, don't get me wrong, it's got some great tracks on it. It's got some great bass lines on it, as do all of the albums after. But they don't have that same kind of just, you know, legendary status as those, like, those two albums, uh, Mother's Milk and Blood Sugar. So because these guys have been around for such a long time, it's easy to be cynical, it's easy to say that they're overrated. Um, and a lot of people say that Flea is an overrated bass player and I've got to disagree there. I challenge anybody to listen to this album and tell me that that is either boring bass playing, not good bass playing, or his tone is bad, or whatever. For me personally, I'd say that his best bass playing is on this album. I'd say his best bass playing is on Blood Sugar, but this is so, so close. It's a close, close second. His phrasing in this is brilliant. The way that he works alongside Chad Smith and John Frusciante, who I also think have, this is their strongest album as well. The three just seem to just bind together perfectly and they're in the pocket a lot. The funk that they play in this is proper funky stuff, you know? And they experiment with stuff. I like the, the funk trumpets that are going on in this as well. So the first song is Good Time Boys. Um, just listen to the tone of that and listen to the way he plays. It sounds like Rage Against the Machine before Rage Against the Machine were Rage Against the Machine. It sounds like an audio slave riff or something like that. It's really kind of forward thinking stuff. Don't forget, this is 1989 this album came out. And I love the way that other bits of music are cut into to that track as well, about halfway through. That's like genius. Then we have Higher Ground, okay? Uh, Higher Ground, obviously a Stevie Wonder track, but the Chilis have taken it and they did their own version. I think that that bass line, that intro, has become almost iconic as well. It's the first slap and pop bass line I ever learned, um, and the tone of it again, the tone of that intro is fantastic. But also, as the song goes on, I think that the chorus, when you get the, to the actual um, keep on hit reaching higher ground part, the bass playing there, doo -doo 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 -doo, really quite busy and loads of stuff going on. Uh, and then obviously, right at the end, it moves to that like kind of like really hard rock version. I think it was probably the song which put the Chili Peppers on the map in many ways as well, commercially. Uh, it was like a, they got a commercial nod from a lot of like radio stations and things like that once they released that track. Subway to Venus is just proper funky come on it is so funky listen to his tone on that listen to his tone and some of his fills and especially the stuff going on at the end and the intro the intro the bass intro brilliant man magic johnson is like a joke song okay it is a novelty song it's just a song about their favorite basketball player and flea is just playing staccato all the way through the verse type thing right but i'm telling you when that funk bit comes in okay okay that the verse is kind of boring and a bit like yeah all right this is this is a novelty when that funk bit comes in and john frusciante is playing his guitar over the top like he does 
I would be hard pushed to find anything else which is as funky as that piece of music. They do that twice, and in the second one it's even more funkier than the first one. And it's just amazing, man. I challenge anybody to listen to that, to that and say, that's not funky. That is funky. Nobody weird like me. Yeah, okay, that sucks. <laughs> I like the bass line to, to it. It's a crazy, crazy bass line, and I don't quite understand how he manages to pull that one off live because that's got to that's got to hurt after a while. And Knock Me Down is an interesting track. Um, commercially, I think that it was probably one of the the most commercial tracks that they were do did at the time. Perhaps they were lent on by the label to uh, play something a little bit more commercial to get more of a you know coverage, a kind of like um, a public coverage. I still think it's a really good track, and the bass playing in it, again, the tone in it is brilliant. And I love the way that he just does those pops. He's playing in the chorus, and it's the, you see me getting high, knock me down. And he's just doing like a pop every now and again. It's kind of like, uh, just this, this, this quick pop on the pocket, and he's not doing it all slap and pop. And just little things like that, I think, really do show quite a uh, musical maturity. The video is bizarre at the end, with that um, kind of like gospel singer at the end, like doing a, yeah bit and that's weird but it it, it, it works it, it works taste of pain could be something that larry graham wrote in sly and the family stone it sounds like bass wise it sounds like um if you want me to stay doesn't it a little bit it's got that about it it's it's i like it it's a good song um flea plays a trumpet solo in it as well i believe it's a nice song it's a catchy song now, stone cold bush is probably my favorite song on the album it is the perfect mix of rock and funk they just got the mix perfect in that song. When I first heard that, no, actually, I tell a lie. When I first heard the bass solo in that, I was just like, what is this, man? I had a VHS video, and I had a live version of that song, and I used to just rewind that and just watch Flea's funk solo come in. And that, around about that time, just made me think, man, this guy is a really, really good player. And kind of back then, in the early, early 90s, he was still kind of underrated. But before Blood, just before Blood Sugar came out, like the Chili Peppers were kind of cultish. They were like there in the background type thing. Just listen to the bass solo in Stone Cold Bush. Okay, it is beautiful. When the time, the time of it as well, and the way that it comes in after the dun 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 it's not, I don't think they do a great version of it, but it's fine. I think they probably did that so they could have an excuse to do that live, maybe. Um, I think they just kind of wanted to get that like rocking energy across, but um, I think that maybe they should have put one of their own tracks in there. And then Pretty Little Ditty. Pretty Little Ditty. I teach that here. You can learn that. <sighs> There's a couple of songs from my youth that inspired me to play bass guitar. One of them was Cliff Burton with Orion. When I heard him do that bass part, I didn't know the bass could do that. I thought it was just about keeping, you know, in the background, doing the bass thing. And then I heard Orion and I was just like, wow, you can do that on bass guitar? And about the same time, I heard Pretty Little Ditty as well. And it had, it had the same effect on me. I think it's a beautiful piece of music. It could be mixed better but it's just so nice, especially the end part, um, the bass playing at the end, is just so rhythmic and so nice and so kind of like moving. It's a really kind of emotional piece. And then he's got, he puts the trumpet over the top as well. I mean, that's all about Flea, that song. He's a really good, he, he, he's, he's a great musician and I'll go as far as saying he's probably a great songwriter as well. And then punk rock classic, yep, okay, that's going back to their kind of like Freaky Starly type roots. It sounds like something that should be on Freaky Starly. Sexy Mexican Maid, yeah, great. Again, um, I think that the album does get weaker as it goes on, but again, just bass playing wise, the tone in that song, man, and his playing, it's just so, it's just so fluent and so funky, and he doesn't really do that so much these days. And I think it'd be great if he could go back to that. Same as Johnny uh, Kick a Hold in the Sky, the bass line to that is brilliant like especially the intro to it just the tone of that song is fantastic i find it difficult to listen to that last part of the album because i've listened to it to death now absolutely to death but all in all 
Mother's Milk is so underrated as an album, I think, because of their kind of commercial success of Californication, their commercial success of Blood Sugar, even, uh, but not as much as Californication, obviously. I think people just kind of ignore the earlier stuff, saying, "Oh, they were just silly boys back then, just having a laugh and being and being silly." Whereas I personally think, in Mother's Milk, his bass playing is just some of the most influential stuff that he's ever done, and some of the most. Um, well thought out the, the phrasing is great that him and Frashante are brilliant uh, and Chad as well and you know even Anthony Anthony doesn't sing like that anymore he doesn't do silly voices anymore which okay people go because of the musical maturity thing he now sings like he sings now all the time and he does that kind of like He's got a certain rhythm, doesn't he? And he repeats that rhythm quite a lot. Um, but back then, he was just mad, man. The guy, even they were all mad. And that madness came across in the music. And that magic came across in the music. And it taught me that it's okay to be mad. Like, musically, if you want to do things that people say you shouldn't do, it's music. It's about expression. You do what you want to do. I love that album. I think it's great. Anyway, what do you guys think? Uh, and what other albums would you have me review the bass guitar to mostly, although I talk about everything really. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.